Hello everybody! My name is Michaela Nicole and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm in a new space. So this is my new studio space and obviously this is the first video I'm recording in here. So bear with me. Lighting might be weird for a little bit. Audio might be weird for a little bit. But yeah, this is my new studio filling space. It's not fully finished, all the decorations are not up, but yeah, let me know if you'd like to see a little um, studio tour, that would be kind of fun. But that is not why we're here today. Um, today we're doing a camera restoration. We have a camera here that we are going to do a restoration on. Now it does not have a handle, um, but that's going to be fine. For now, let's just get started with this restoration. Okay, so here we go. This is a brownie box camera. Now, I don't know the exact date on this one yet. We can assume that it is around the 1910s to 1930s, I would venture to say. And yeah, it's in pretty good shape, but it's missing its handle. And the um, facets on it, the metal bits, are all a little rusty, as you can see. So, what we're gonna do today is just clean it up. Um, as you can see, it is pretty dirty and gross in there. And, yeah. We're, we're just gonna do the dang thing. I don't think I'm gonna take all the metal pieces off of this one in this video, um, but potentially in another video we can uh, take all of the pieces off and de-rust them. And without further ado, let's just get right into this. So the first thing we're gonna do is open it up. These cameras have these metal bits here that take that open them so if you're following along uh, just pop open your little metal fasteners be gentle it's not popped out that's the other thing you have to do is you pop out the winding key and it will just open right up and I'm a little scared oh there we go it says the name on the inside folks this camera is a number 2a Brownie Model B. So let me give you a date on that real quick. I hadn't opened this camera up prior to this video, so we are finding out together. Okay, browniecamera.com, my favorite place. So Model B was from 1920 to 1924. So there she is. Um, something that I will tell you if you're looking to figure out your camera's release year is you can't rely on the patents because patents are made before the camera is. So they say 1916 patents, but the camera was not made until 1920 to 1924. No big deal, just something to note. Um, but basically if you get a camera, somewhere on it, it tends to have a date or I mean a name um, so obviously right there, the number 2A brownie camera model B, those two lines, yes, patents are written in on the metal. So that's pretty fun. This camera feels like it's still in good working condition. You can see that there's still the glass in our viewfinders. Now this one's not as intuitive as the one my dad and I just did, because as you can see, if you're going to take a vertical picture, the vertical square is right there, and then when you would turn it to the side, it would be in horizontal. But in the other camera, um, the QB number 2A, this is all one piece of glass. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. So let's just clean this up a little bit, shall we? I think we shall. And um, yeah, maybe I'll bring you to the side so you can see everything going on and We'll get started. Alrighty, so here we go. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this camera angle, if that's good for you, and if not, 
let me know that too. And hopefully we can together figure out how to make this work a little bit better. So what we've got here is just leather wipes. Are there any in here? There are. We've got leather wipes, which I need to buy more of. We've got 70% isopropyl alcohol. I have these reusable cotton rounds um, because I just feel like that's good for the environment, so I got some. And I am gonna put on a nitrile glove just because I don't feel like having rubbing alcohol fingers. It's not my favorite experience. We also have some Q-tips that I'm pulling out of my little drawer right now. So just regular plain Q-tips. And I think that's all we're gonna use for now. Cause there's no screws that I'm trying to get out of this camera at the moment. So let's just start here with, actually let's start on the alcohol. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to drink an energy drink while I do this because it's 8 a.m. So I think to get started I'm going to clean out the um... the eye holes and that kind of thing. So here we go, let's just start. Something else that might be a wise choice for me to own would be um, some type of Windex like wipes for these glass facets, or not facets, um, these glass panes that are in the camera because that would just probably work out pretty well. Let's see. clean those out and you can't really see anything through them at the moment but that's fine you can see the table um, but fun fact also which is probably pretty obvious if you know you think about it for a second but this is where the picture was taken and these are the viewfinders so it's not like you know today's camera where what you're seeing in here is exactly what you're getting here um, so if you, you can't like move your finger in front of the shutter to see something different, you have to move your finger in front of these if you want to see something, uh, moving, but I digress. Let's continue on here. I'm gonna grab one of these cotton doodads. and just soak it in some alcohol here. I usually tend to fold them in half and then just dump some in the middle and then fold it in half again and kind of soak it into the rest of it. And then you've got the middle that's pretty soaked. So I'm just gonna do a quick once over. Let me get that out of your frame. A quick once over with my rubbing alcohol. This is not really to do a whole lot except get dirt out of the metal, which doesn't really tend to happen all that often. But there is some gunk coming off of there. Okay. 
So typically, any areas that look like they would have a bunch of gunk in them probably do. And it's probably a safe bet oopsies, to try and clean those out pretty well. And the reason we use rubbing alcohol and not something else like, uh, I don't know if you think maybe a degreaser like a uh, dish soap uh, mixture or something like that. The reason we don't do that is because uh, water makes metal rust, obviously. And you can even see here this camera has some rust spots. Um, for example, there's a streak here that's rusted. And that's just, we don't want to perpetuate that issue. So I'm not going to clean out the inside of this because um, it looks pretty good in there. So what we're going to do now is that we can't clean this part out. Um, so let me explain how we just did that. You saw me take this camera apart, um, obviously. So it comes apart. This part goes in there, slides out. So this part tends to be tends to be metal and a wooden outer box or sometimes this is made of metal and then covered in a leatherette or canvas um, with a um, a coat like a, a texture um, it's called impregnated canvas um, this one is leather and most of them were covered in a real leather, or at least the handles were, which is why so many of them rot off and break, because, you know, leather gets dry and you don't take care of them sometimes and then it gets gross. So, all that to say, this part of the camera that you take off, that just houses the actual camera piece, tends to be made out of a similar material to whatever the front is, but it could be cardboard, it could be wood, it could be metal. This one, I would venture to say, is cardboard um, because it's very lightweight and you can kind of feel it on the inside. Here it just feels like a cardboard. It's also kind of chipping here, which also leads me to think that. So that just ventures to tell me that I should not clean out the inside of that one because you don't want to saturate cardboard because it's not good for it. So. When you have one that's got cardboard, you need to not use rubbing alcohol on the inside. You can still use a Q-tip and get around it and get the metal bits, but you just don't want to use anything that can damage it. But this one's either wood or cardboard. It might be wood. Just a very thin sheet of it. But let's get one of these leather wipes out here and with that. Oh, this is my last leather wipe, so I guess I better make it last. Alright, we're just gonna get started on the top here. Now, the reason we use leather wipes, and by we I mean me, the reason I use leather wipes is because I feel like they, since they're meant for cars, um, to like preserve the leather in cars, um, I think they do a really nice job of conditioning the leather you have. 
and I think that they do a nice job of cleaning them and getting all the dirt out of them without being too abrasive. So that's why I use these, but the only thing that I have to say is sometimes they can make the leather feel kind of sticky, which is a little strange, um, but not really a problem, it's just a thing. Here we go on the back. Now, super interestingly, they embossed the leather on the back to say use 116 film, which is really cool and fascinating. And then that little placard at the bottom just says Eastman Kodak Company and all that important information that one should know about the Eastman Kodak Company. And did I just bend this? I think I did, but that's fine. We'll just bend it back. <laughs> Um, that is interesting. I think, so there used to have been a screw here, um, cause there's a little divot and a little hole where that would have been held on. So obviously that got lost in translation at some point. Um, but this one you can see still has that, uh, to keep it from going anywhere. But all the others I've seen don't do that. So that's just interesting. Now let's quickly do this side. Now, once I have a chance, we may take this one apart as well and clean it up. Um, but if you want to see us get a camera uh, to fully working or at least pretty close to it from not being in great condition, once again, go check out those videos I was telling you about earlier um, where we worked through the QP number 2A and fixed some problems that that camera has. Um, I think you'll find it pretty interesting if you're looking to see a working restoration, but this is just an aesthetic one. Um, mostly just for time's sake, but at some point we could do a full cleanup and redo on this one as well because with the QB we did some interesting things to it and with this one I don't think we would do that I think we would just um, take out the rusted bits so like the this metal bit for example that lines that glass and take that out and just, just like de-rust and repaint would be probably the moves we would do there, but let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing from this camera. Um, because the leatherette's in good condition. I'm also thinking we could make a handle, but just let me know what you think. Um, because I'm down to do anything. Now, I will say, make sure that when you do this, you wait for everything to dry before you put it back together so that nothing goes rusty on the inside again. Um, but since I did the first part first, the inside part first, as in this front piece, I knew it would be dry and good. So here is just the cleaned up, cute, uh, not cutie, this is a brownie. Kodak Brownie number 2A. Um, obviously this is not an entire restoration, um, but it is cleaning up the camera, um, and it looks pretty alright. Oh, I didn't clean up these front little guys. Let me get them real quick. Okay, that's a little better. The thing is, is that these glass bits, there's dirt stuck inside of them, so I'd have to take the whole thing apart to clean those out, and that's just a little, a little much for now, but 
there it is. The finished Kodak Brownie 2A Model B. And we'll compare this to some other cameras eventually. Um, but yeah, there it is in all its glory. So I'll see you in the outro. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you haven't already and you'd like to, hit the subscribe button down below. Subscribe, become a member of the family. Uh, go check out the playlist that's linked on one of the two sides here um, of the Vintage Cameras playlist for the other restoration videos I've done. And keep an eye out because we have a big project coming in May. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!